welcome to this, uh, to this event is the Social Survey and Endangered Species. During the, uh, the election campaign, you may recall that some politicians in, uh, in debating crime in this country said they preferred, and I quote, real facts to airy opinion polls. They were referring to the British Crime Survey, uh, which unhelpfully for those politicians suggested that crime victimization was at its lowest level since it first started measuring the thing in 1981. It didn't fit with the broken Britain campaign. I am, I have to say, delighted that uh, since entering the, the government, those uh, same politicians have now been persuaded that the survey does have real value and validity and is not simply an airy opinion poll. Um, but uh, nevertheless, these are tough times uh, for social science and particularly for those who think a good way of finding out what people think, want and do is to ask them. Uh, social surveys are regarded as a nice to have rather than an essential in our age of austerity. Uh, as Eric Pickles put it last year, the mo I won't do the accent, the money spent <laughs> on form fillers and bean counters could be far better spent helping elderly people to stay in their homes or almost anything, in fact. <laughs> True to his word, as I'm sure you all know, he has scrapped the citizenship survey in the face of significant opposition from the social science sector, sector and a pleading letter from uh, Sir Michael Scholar of the UK Statistics Authority and indeed from the national statistician, Jill Matheson, I think. Uh, four million quid saved, hurrah, a cut, justified by the Department for Communities uh, they are keen to move away from costly, top-down monitoring and measurement of local policies. Who'd want to do that? I'm reminded in all of this what happened in the, uh, the 1980s when uh, Margaret Thatcher invited the man from Marks and Spencer, uh, Sir Derek Rayner, to conduct his value for money review of the Central Statistical Office. He helpfully concluded that it was, quotes, too heavily committed to serving the public at large. <laughs> in, uh, in, Sir Derek's, in Sir Derek's view, information should not be collected primarily for publication, but primarily because government needs it for its own business. And overnight, the uh, troublesome bean counters of the day were stripped of their public responsibilities. Many lost their jobs as I think the government wiped out a quarter of its statistical service. Um, as I'm sure you'll be hearing this evening, it isn't just the citizenship survey that has been the victim of, of government cuts. Uh, the general lifestyle survey has been hit. The British Social Attitudes Survey has also seen some of its funding withdrawn, although I'm told replaced from the uh, big society. Uh, and of course, the ESRC funding has been, has been cut by, by almost 40% by 2014, I think, although they probably regard that as, uh, as a victory. Clearly, if not uh, actually endangered, the social survey is certainly being required to justify its existence. And some would say, a good thing. Do we really need taxpayers' money to be spent asking quite as many questions as we do? In a world of Facebook and Twitter, do we need traditional and relatively expensive social surveys when we have social media? On the other hand, if David Cameron is serious, about empowering citizens with information to hold the state to account it may actually be a bit of a growing market for data. And if he believes that well-being should be a factor in driving policy, he'll need social surveys to show what works. If he really wants to build a big society, he may well, despite the demise of the very survey which measured these things, want to know how citizenship is faring in Britain. To consider these questions and others, we have two leaders in their fields. Penny Young is the chief executive of NATSEN, the National Centre for Social Research, a position she's had for, for two years now. She spent her career in research and public engagement in a variety of settings, including as the director of research at the consumer campaigner Which and at the BBC, most recently working with the BBC Trust. Ray Pointer is managing director of The Future Place, a leadership consultancy advising private and public sector firms. He just explained his uh, business plan to me. It sounded absolutely brilliant. You go to one lot, you, they tell you what they think, you take their advice to the next lot, and then you sell it back to the third party. It sounds like, I, I don't know how he does it, but it sounds brilliant. Um, uh, he's also the author of there it is, the book, uh, that, funny enough, just brought a copy along, the handbook of online and social media research, so he knows a heck of a lot about the power of the tweet. So 
I suspect it's going to be horribly polite. But the idea is that we have a kind of Harry Hill fight uh, between traditional social research and social media. That's basically the idea. Ten minutes each, and then it's uh, open to the floor. Uh, so first of all, uh, would you like to show your appreciation to Penny Young?